everyone, George here, and a different style of video for you today. I wanted to give you a rundown of all my aquascapes at home, including a very sneak preview at two brand new aquariums. I can't show you too much of these because they're going to be published exclusively first on the Oase channels, but maybe we can just give you a tiny, tiny sneak preview of those. But let's start off with the Aquascaper 1200. Say hello to Tommy, everyone. <laughs> um, as you can see, looking really great now, nice and mature. Approaching the point where I would say it is ready for a final photo shoot. And maybe that is an opportunity uh, for another video. You know, how do, I, how do I set up the aquarium for a competition style photo? So let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. I did also consider making a video on uh, how to take good aquarium photos with your smartphone as well. So maybe we can do a, you know, like an iPhone versus SLR kind of comparison, or just let me know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in. So um, I'm actually using my SLR right now, handheld. Hopefully it's not too jerky. Uh, I haven't really ever done this style of filming before. So um, yeah, it's interesting. It's coming out of my comfort zone. I normally stick the the camera on a tripod and then stand in front of the tripod or you know the score but I think it looks quite good quite smooth hopefully let's check out the uh, this aquarium in a bit more detail so for those that don't already know we're using the twin star 1200 sa led lamps the this is really great I mean it, it's not cheap I think it's about 500 pounds um, but just the one light unit is sufficient to grow all of the plants, as you can see here, looking all really, really healthy. The color rendition's great, bringing out the reds perfectly on the limb, the filler, hyperoides. Um, but this will need trimming again. For those that missed the trimming video, I did publish a quite a, an in-depth video on how to trim your stem plants, so check that out if you've not seen it yet. And this is, this is a, an interesting learning point because you do need, you know, an aquarium will only look good whilst it's maintained appropriately. So it will get to a stage where those stems are going to look a bit chaotic, a bit unruly, and they will need trimming. I mean, for instance, this, if you come down here, this group of plants here is looking a little bit kind of um, too big. I wanted to kind of create this definite sort of slope down here. So these will need trimming back. And it is a challenge, you know, when you've got, I've got two different stem plants in here. I've got the Limnophila hyperoides and the Hygrophila cymensis 53b. And so they do grow at different rates and they, and they will grow at different rates of, according to where they are in the aquarium, you know, how much access to light and CO2 they have. So it's almost impossible to get all your plants, all your stem plants in particular, growing at exactly the right rate for them all to achieve the look, the final look that you're after in the long term. So it's always a bit of a test and adjust when it's when it comes to trimming. Here we've got the pearl gourami. There's a pair in here. Beautiful fish. You can see the pisto is actually that's the juvenile male epistogramma there in the distance. And then just coming into shot now you'll be able to see some of the Sabwa resplendens or the Asian rummy nose. These are beautiful fish. And there's a female there, which is like the drab colour. Let's just try and boost the exposure a bit for you. And glow like Tetris as well there on the bottom right. So there is a bit of a... I would consider this mix of fish a little bit chaotic. I do prefer to stock fish in terms of their continents. So ideally I'd stick to Asian or South American fish, for instance, or even African fish. And I do have a mix of Asian and South American in here. Um, but I didn't have the heart to kind of take any out. and Yeah, really, really happy with this aquascape and having a lot more time at home than I normally do. I'm taking the opportunity to maintain it more than I usually do. I actually pay my eldest stepson, he's 17 now, and I actually pay him to do water changes and basic maintenance on these while I'm working on other projects. I am still working on my book. It is almost finished. I'm going to and from the publisher with various edits and a couple of extra chapters that we've talked about so super excited about that the, the, there is a, a delayed release date now it is going to be um, the planned release is November instead of August so um, 
little, wait a little bit longer, but I think it will be worth the wait. I'm really excited by the new content that's coming and I've had the real joy of, of going through all the photos. Um, been looking through my, my iMac at old old photos of old scapes and um, I used to be really really into photography um, I actually used to be into photography more than I was uh, making videos so that's kind of where I learned my trade if you like it in, in photography so there's some really beautiful shots um, that I'm, they're exclusive no one's ever seen these before on the internet or or magazines so these are all exclusive to the book so I'm really excited to be able to share those with you hopefully in November and I'm still planning on doing some kind of tour in the States and Europe and maybe even Asia. So hopefully get to meet some of you in the flesh. Um, okay, so the escape itself, I mean, check out the playlist of this. There's all the details of all the plants, how it was created, how it's been maintained, how I've dealt with algae issues. Um, so there's loads of detail on this scape. So I won't go into too much more. I just wanted to kind of ramble. I will show you in the cabinet though. Let me just open the doors. It's super grainy at the moment, but you can see everything that I've got going on there. There's the Iwazo Biomaster Thermo 600 filter, just the one. I was running two, but decided to run the one and it's running fine. Pressurized CO2 there with a GLA regulator. This is an amazing high quality reg. Um, just a power bank there for the lighting and the CO2 timers, which actually have the CO2 come on, I think three hours before the lights now. And then I actually do have um, an auto doser. So let's go over here. And there's the doser there at the bottom. This pumps in 25 millilitres of the Tropica Specialised Nutrition. There's the in-use bottle there, and then I have a spare bottle there. And inline diffuser there, so the CO2 gets direct straight in to the inline diffuser and then comes out the lily pipe there. I've actually turned the CO2 off for filming because it does cloud the water slightly. Loads of shrimp in here. The shrimp is like a self-sustaining colony of cherry shrimp that they do get picked off by the fish, but um, because there's so much planting in here for them to hide, uh, they are they are keeping a, a nice population. I've actually transferred a couple over to my Fluval Flex, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, let's dive on over to my cichlid tank. Okay, here we are. This is the Oase Highline 175, and you're just gonna get a sneak preview of the Oase Style Line 125 to the left there. This is just a plant holding tank right now. Can't really say much more than that. And yeah, this is home to 10 Chindongo Seleuzes, which is a Malawi cichlid. There's uh, four male, which is the, the blue and black stripes, and then six female, which is the yellows. Um, do get quite a lot of algae build up on the rocks. I'm not too concerned about that. It's just a natural food source for the fish as well. Uh, but that, this gets water changed twice every week as well. 75% water change each time to keep on top of the water quality. And just a really, really lovely aquarium to live with. It's, it's no plants to worry about, no liquid fertilizers, no CO2 injection, just the fish. It's just a fish tank with nice hardscape, nice active fish that are quite interactive with you. Um, really enjoy feeding these. I'll show you in the cabinet in a minute, but you can just absolutely go crazy like little pigs. Uh, but beautiful fish. Arguably overstocked now, these fish are getting quite big. Um, so that's another reason why I'm doing the large frequent water changes to keep on top of any kind of organic nitrate buildup. I'll just show you in the cabinet. Again, this is the Iwase Biomaster 600. Um, arguably over filtered, but obviously with the large population of fish big fish producing lots of waste. Uh, this is what I use to dechlorinate the water, just a teaspoon of the ACCR as it's getting pumped in directly to the tank. Check out my video on how I do large water changes. And this is the fish food in here, which is uh, Origin Nutrition from um, Kev's Riffs, who actually supplied me with these beautiful fish. So shout out to those guys. But yeah, really, really high quality aquarium system, this, the Highline 175. This is the feeding lid here. And just obviously feed the fish and then close it. They've already been fed today, so I won't feed them again. Um, there's an, a Tropica art print there. I've got three of these dotted around the gallery. Love these. It's on the gloss white cabinet. And it's just a really lovely system. Excuse the reflections. 
You can view it from this side as well. Um, the fish are constantly kind of digging in the gravel and stuff, so you can see bare bottom gravel, and there's quite a, actually quite a deep layer behind where they've been shifting, shifting the gravel around all the time. So, but yeah, lovely aquarium to live with. We've talked briefly about that quiet tank. We can't talk about it too much. Now here we have the Fluval Flex, which I set up about 10 days ago. There is a full update on this on the Tropica Aquarium Plants channel, so you can check that out. I will do a full update on this as well in a, couple, in a week or so. The stone is still there, weighing the wood down, a bit scared to remove it, but the, you can see the plant growth is great, just sort of 10 days worth of plant growth, no seed to injection. Standard lighting that comes fitted to the tank, and you can see really healthy algae free plant growth. There's one Amano shrimp in here, let's see if we can see him. You can see him in the centre there. And then we have a near white snail in the background and there's a cherry shrimp as well. <laughs> so just a minimal algae crew at the moment. But lovely tank, super easy to look after, super easy to set up, not too expensive and hopefully just shows you guys that you can create a you know, nice aquarium, nice planted tank aquascape without having to break the bank. Okay, super quick preview of the Starline 85. Make sure you check out the Oase channel for more details. Okay guys, so there we go. Just a brief update of all my aquariums in the GFS gallery. Um, I will be going live uh, at the time of filming. It's Easter Saturday, so I will be going live on the, my YouTube channel on Sunday. And I'm also going to be doing a Instagram live stream with MD Fish Tank. So congratulations to him for reaching 100,000 subscribers. Epic achievement. So I'll leave it with some just nice footage of the 1200 because it is looking so lovely right now. Absolutely love this scape. Um, and again, let me know in the comments, guys, do you want a kind of tutorial video on photography, smartphone photography or, you know, contest photography? Let me know in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to say cheerio, you take care, especially at this crazy time that we're living through right now. Enjoy your aquascapes, use the opportunity while you're potentially on lockdown to you know, spend a bit more time on your tanks, support your local aquarium retailers if you can, maybe buy some new plants or hardscape, have a go at rescaping your tanks while you've got this extra time potentially. And yeah, just take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you on the next video. Keep on scaping. Cheerio.